the most common question I get from those moving from React to Astro is how do I use them together? Now, there is a way to get all the benefits of Astro, like using content collections and the image components, and still get to use your React. You can use them together, and I'm going to talk about three different ways I do this. We'll talk about passing down props, how to use the image component to actually get the rendered compressed image from Astro down into a React component, and also how to set up an API endpoint where you can use that to query certain things like content collections within Astro. You ready? Let's go. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Okay, so let's talk about Astro and React. You can see here I've got a React components. I'm hydrating it with JavaScript and that way I can actually submit the form and stuff like that. It's just got a sample post right now and it says set when I do that. So we'll talk about kind of how this works in a second. But what I want to do is I want to use the power of content collections here. I've already got all my posts and I want to pass this down to my form. So let's do that now. I'm going to say post equals uh, posts and it's not expecting it right now. So I won't know what to do with it, but we can fix that. So let's come back over here and let's type this. First of all, let's grab my posts and then let's just type this. And we've got a nice helper in Astro called collection entry like this. It's a generic. So we can take any of our content types. In this case, we've only got the one. And then because this is an array of posts, I need to make sure to type it that way. All right, so now this should be happy over here. And I'm actually passing down everything in this collection to my React form. So obviously you probably only want to do this for smaller collections, but here I've got just five or six things. It looks like just five. And I'm passing all this stuff down to that React component. Now React can get that as any other prop and then do whatever you want with it. So I can take this down this way and let's just replace the select item with a loop. So I'll say posts.map and I simply want to return that select item. Obviously we need to change a few things here. So the first thing I want to do is add the value here. In this case, I'm just going to use the ID of the post, post.id, which is a slugified version essentially in this case of the actual blog post file. Now we need the same thing here for the key because I'm in React land. So I'll say post.id. And then obviously we don't want it to say sample for everything. Let's change this out to say post.data. In this case, we'll use the title. So just like that, it's actually gotten all the stuff down into the React component. Now you can come over here and click and look at that. All these posts are showing up. Cool. So that's the first kind of way to interact with Astro stuff and React. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is how to work with images. Now, you might know that Astro gives you some nice helpers for images. In fact, if I come over here and I inspect this right here, you'll notice I've got this nice, like, minified image right here. I can even do more and add a source set. I've actually done a video on Astro images recently, but you'll see it adds loading lazy and decoding async and a couple of other things as well that are really nice. So what if I want to use that kind of rendering engine, but pass that down to React? Once again, you can simply use a prop. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so over here, you'll notice that I'm using the Astro image component, and I've imported the image up here, and then I'm simply rendering it with this image component. Now this will render to an HTML image tag, but it has all those optimizations we just saw. So let's go ahead and try this. Let's come down here. We'll say image, and we'll pass the entire image like this down to React. So let's see if we can grab that over here. We'll call this image as well. And I'll come in here and we'll have image with B type of image. So we need to actually think about this a little bit differently. And there may be a way to do this that I just don't know. But the way I've always done this with React is instead of passing down the component, you actually render it all to the static strings you need. And then you compile it yourself inside of your React. So let's come back over here. Instead of passing along the entire image, I want to actually use the get image function. Now, what this will allow is for us to actually render everything we need with Astro and then pass those rendered, you know, assets down to React. So I'll call this rendered image and then let's just simply await here, get image. This is a function we get from Astro where we can actually render out everything we need. And we need to pass a few things along here. So that blog image right here, we'll just pass the whole import along as the SRC. And then the alt here, we'll say like blog image one. And then finally, we can set a width and height as well. So let's do that. Let's do like 250 and let's copy this down and we'll change the height as well. Okay, so that's everything we need to actually render this image. This is what we now want to pass down this way. So this rendered image will now get down and you'll notice that it's type get image result. If I come back over here, we can change this to get image result. And you'll notice I actually do get typing for this from Astro. In other words, Astro exposes this type so you'll know exactly what's on the object that you're getting here. Let's come down this way and let's comment this out. Come back inside here. We're going to take the M dot and notice I've got everything I need. The source set, whatever else I might want to use. I'm going to use the alt here. And then we might as well just use the width and height as well. And notice just like that, it shows up over this way. Maybe let's move this down. How about like down here? 
There, there we go. That looks a little bit better. So now you can see I can select these. I've got these being passed down as props. And I've also passed down a rendered image directly here. Now we saw the benefits in the Astro kind of world. Let's see what happens once we pass this down. You'll notice we actually get the rendered string of where this will show up in our build. I don't get some of the other helpers. So if I come back over here, you'll notice I've also got other things like loading lazy, decoding async, fetch priority auto. So those are the things I do not get. But of course, I can simply add these here and maybe I'd have my own image component that does this. So we'll set all these ourselves right now and then we get all the same benefits. We've got the rendered, actually compressed image file. You can see it's a WebP in this case. And I've got all the other things that I've now manually added. Now, of course, if you're using some kind of image service, this would do it all for you. But if you want to keep stuff local and use Astro's get image function, you can see the power here with combining it with React. Okay, so both of those are just using props. So it's the same kind of idea, obviously just dealing with different types of data, content collection versus an image. Let's now talk about what you might want if you have a whole section of your app that relies on content collections. So in this case, we've just got a few blog posts, these five here. And when I hit send, you'll notice if I jump back up top here, we're gonna go ahead and grab all that form data. In this case, it would be whatever items we're actually triggering here. You can see this name is ID, it's required. So this name is what will be passed along in that form data. We're passing it along to an action called send email. So let's jump over here. This is just an action I defined that can accept a form. It can take in an, an input optionally here. So maybe we should do that actually. Let's come in here. We'll say Z. This comes from Astro Content. We'll take in an object here where we have an ID that is a Z dot string. This would be the name of the individual thing. And then we can actually destructure that and get it down here. So ID like this. And I could just come inside here and say that ID. All right, so now you'll see I come down here and I can say something like markdown style guide, hit send, and it says sent markdown style guide. Now for this third option, I'm simply going to show the basic idea. I actually had a whole app to show you this, but I thought it was too complex. So I want to focus in on kind of the use case here. The idea would be that I come in here and let's do something like send an email. All right, that's what it actually says it'll do here. Send me a blog post. And so let's say you say, hey, send me this particular email. Well, what I might have is some kind of React email template or whatever you're using to construct your emails, and I might want to pass along a bunch of data to that. We'll talk about another scenario in a second, but here there's a few ways you could handle this. You could simply pass along the entire data for that content collection to your React email component or whatever you're using again. That would be the method we've already looked at, passing along props. Sometimes, however, let's say that in this React email, you send along the item you're wanting, but maybe in that email, you're also wanting to loop through a bunch of other items in your content collection, and within that content collection, show a couple of other items that they could have purchased or other books or other posts they could have received. You can see how that gets really messy if you're handling this in your handler here. So sometimes it's actually really useful to just expose an API endpoint that has access to everything you might want. So let me stop talking and actually show you. So let's come over here to pages. I'm going to create a new folder called API. And inside here, let's create something called uh, post.json.ts. So what we're going to do is expose an endpoint that you can hit and get back data however you want, wherever you want within your application, or in this case, even outside of your application. So we're going to export const. We're going to call this thing post because it'll be a post endpoint. And I've got an API route helper here just for the typing. Now, the first thing I want to do before we even return anything is to make sure that I go ahead and grab whatever the request is. That way I can pick off the actual item that's going to be sent along. I'll start by picking off the body from the request.json, and then we'll just extract the ID that we're going to pass along. Next, I'll go ahead and grab the post and we need to await get entry. This gets the individual entry here from my content collection. Now, it's possible that there isn't a post that matches the ID I pass along. So in that case, I just want to return a 404 that says it's not found. But assuming that it is found, then I want to return a new response or I simply stringify the actual post details. In other words, we can hit this endpoint from anywhere within a React application, within our own actions if we want to. Although there, obviously, we could just query the, the post directly here as well. But the idea is sometimes you want access to your content collections outside of kind of the Astro scope. So let's kind of mimic what you would do if you pass this off to a React function. So let's say there was a React function right here, and we wanted to send along just the ID, and that ID was then going to hit this endpoint and get what we need from it. So let's go ahead and grab our post here. We're going to do a wait, fetch, and then based on my environment, so I can either use the dev environment and pass along my local host, or I can use the site variable. This is actually something that needs to be set in the Astro config. So you'd want to come over here and set site here to whatever your website happens to be. So like HTTP, whatever this happens to be, mysite.com. All right, so whatever you set that as, this is what will be used here. Now I'm going to fetch here, but I also need to add a couple other things, right? So this needs to be a method of post where I stringify the ID that's been passed in. Remember, this is what that endpoint is expecting. 
So we'll await that. And then let's go ahead and change this down here. We're going to take the data dot data. I actually know what type this is. So I could actually declare that as well, I guess. Collection entry, same thing as we did before. And this should be a type of blog and it should only be a single one. So now if I come in here, you'll notice we've got all those various things. So I can pass along the title here. Having passed in the ID, I can now grab the title from that endpoint. Now there's one other thing we need to do, and that is we need to make sure that this route right here is not a simple static route. I can do that by doing export const pre-render, and I'm gonna set this equal to false. Now this only works if you have an adapter set up here. I'm assuming you know how to do this here, but I've got the Vercel adapter. I'm not sure why this is yelling at me right now. Uh, maybe that, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, so this for cell adapter right here is what enables that. And now this is going to be a dynamic route, which means at every time it's hit, it will query this data fresh. And this is the only way to do post routes, obviously. So in this case, now, if I come over here, we do like second post and hit send, it will say sent second post. Now, how is it doing that? Well, it's actually hitting my endpoint. In this case, this happens to be an astro action. It's then going out and hitting that dynamic API endpoint. It's sending a post request, getting back the fresh data from my content collections. Now, a couple notes here, because we're using a content collection, this will just be based on build time. So even though this is an SSR route, it's not dynamically grabbing those, it's grabbing them based on the last build. Now, there is something coming called live content collections. In that case, you could use the live content collections over here, and let's say you're using some kind of CMS connected to your content collection, it could query that all live. But those three ways are the ways I end up interacting with React components. Now, the other times I've used this is to like show off a bunch of different like posts, for instance, and I want to have like that whole thing be some kind of React component that can filter and sort and all that kind of stuff, but I want the power of content collections. Well, the nice thing is if you have an endpoint like this, that instead of taking a post request, I'd probably make it a get request that returns everything in a collection, then you can actually grab that data, use it in React, just by hitting a basic API endpoint like you normally would in React. Before I go, I wanted to mention I'm doing a fundraiser for childhood cancer this month, 2025 of September. You'll notice here that I've got stuff from Vercel or Mux or Cloudkin and Neon, all this kind of stuff, my own Astro course, Warp, um, all this is available to those who actually get. Now, the cool thing is you get to help donate to St. Jude, the actual organization that does all this cancer research that's spread all over the globe. And on top of that, you get a chance to win one of these amazing prizes. Now, I tell people this every year, but by giving you almost guarantee yourself to get one of these donation incentives and a huge thanks to all these sponsors. You can see the details of all those things down this way. I'm trying to raise $5,000 this year. We've already got 546, but you'll notice that this is a very, very ambitious goal based on what we've done in the past, but I think we can do it. You all are so generous every year and I hope this year will be the exact same. So two things, why St. Jude and how do you win one of these prizes? Well, St. Jude is not just a hospital for kids with cancer. They're a cancer research hospital. They're truly a global organization that freely shares their research. And if you happen to be a patient of St. Jude, they will fly you and your family there, provide for every single penny. You will not spend a dime to be treated. They believe you should focus on getting better and not on hospital bills. They're currently in a big push to help cure childhood cancer globally, especially in countries that don't have as ready access to medical care. So by donating here, you're helping eradicate childhood cancer and other life-threatening diseases all over the globe. Now, you can win one of these by getting a raffle ticket for every $5 you get. At the end of the month, I do a live stream where I raffle these off, and you can get a chance to win one of these. Now, I've got so many prizes this year, it really is going to take a ton of people giving to even get through all these prizes. So if you give at least $5, you've got a really good chance of winning one of these amazing prizes. Well, thanks so much for joining with me and showing your generosity this month. Well, I hope that was a huge help in your understanding of how Astro and React work together. If you have more questions about how they work, I've got a lot more to say between like how to choose which components, like do I use Re React or do I use Astro and a bunch more. But let me know down in the comments below what you'd want me to cover. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.